So as a kidnapping negotiator, I'm working kidnappings all over the world, Americans doing stupid things, and this is an American that did something stupid in the Philippines, and this is a sociopath that's got him. And this is a negotiator that I'm coaching. And we go round and round for months and finally, and make no mistake, this guy in a bandana is a, a murdering, raping, killing, sociopathic murdering machine. Does empathy work on sociopaths? This guy's a sociopath. This is a poster child for sociopaths. We're several months into this, and we're going to lay a heavy-duty dose of empathy on this guy, which is say everything they're thinking, saying, and expressed from their point of view until they say that's right. $10 million ransom demand for the American on the table. But $10 million for war damages, for 500 years of oppression from the Spanish to the Japanese to the Americans. Now, immediately, all of you are tuning out because you're saying to yourself, I've never been in an argument where the person on the other side was bringing up stuff from the past that didn't matter anymore. <laughs> that doesn't happen. 500 years of oppression. After about four months of back and forth, I put my guy on the phone, get a that's right out of him. Lay it all out. You're not asking for ransom for the American. You're asking for war damages, for economic harm, the south of the Philippines for 500 years of oppression from the Spanish to the Japanese to the Americans, the injustice of it all. You're not Filipinos anyway. You're a separate, moral, independent homeland that's being oppressed by a current regime in Manila that's held up by the latest colonial invaders who are the Americans. Lay it on thick. And my guy talked to the terrorist and laid it on thick. And it was a moment of silence, and the terrorist said, that's right. And the ransom demand went away. We went from $10 million to zero in that moment. It went away. The sociopath let it all go. The case took a couple twists and turns. About four months later, on Monday, Thursday, the Thursday before Easter, the night Jesus prayed in Gethsemane, the American walked away. Walked away. He's walking down a dirt road, local farmer sees him, says, you must be the American who's been kidnapped. He says, I am. They alert the Philippine military. The military comes down, picks him up, flies him to Manila. They hold a big press conference. The military says, in a daring rescue operation, we have rescued the American. It's a daring. They gave him a ride. <laughs> we got him out of the country. I'm back in Manila about three weeks later. I connect back up with my guy. He says, you're not going to believe who called me. I don't know who called you. The terrorist, sociopath, the killer. The killing machine called him and said, have you been promoted yet? I don't know what it was he said to me on the phone. You're really good. They should promote you. Hangs up the phone. What's he saying in that moment? And think the context. In this negotiation, the sociopath got nothing. And he called his counterpart to say, I felt respected by you. I'd talk to you again. We're OK. Which is a way that everybody you interact with should feel when they get done with the interaction, regardless of how the outcome goes. They should feel so respected and so heard that they can get nothing and say to you, we're OK. I'd deal with you again. 